we're going to talk about this. Hello, my name is Hannah, or Hand Grenade, and welcome back to my channel. Channel? <laughs> welcome back to my channel. I am a huge fan of horror, and today I want to talk about the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, where do I begin with this? I've seen online that this film is incredibly divisive. Much like Halloween Kills when that came out last year. It split the horror fandom in two, it really has. There are people who love this film and there are people who absolutely despise this film and anyone who likes it. I think it split the fandom more than anyone could really predict, which is baffling. But here we go. And I wanted to talk about it, you know, because I'm a huge Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. The original film I studied at uni and I did a chapter of my dissertation based on it. Everything about it is just incredible. It draws you in, it's uncomfortable, it feels gross to watch and you just kind of feel a bit dirty after watching it and you feel uneasy. It, it's a moment in cinema that I think is impossible to replicate honestly. So with that being said, hearing about a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film, I was excited but apprehensive. Incredibly apprehensive because I didn't know what to expect. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise has been through so many ups and downs and it's had massive changes in tone. Just look at the first film compared to the second film. With the same creative minds behind it, it's kind of fascinating to see how much of a dark comedy the second one takes in comparison to the first one that is grindhouse and almost cinema verite like you know it's hideous but the second one is comical it's bizarre and i know it's something that's very off-putting to people that have been introduced to the franchise I, I know the first time i ever watched the first texas chainsaw massacre film i didn't like it i i genuinely was like i don't see the point this film is not interesting, this film is garbage, I, I don't see what the hype is. But as I got older I gained a respect for it and I kept thinking about it and I just wanted to watch it again. I was like maybe I didn't give this a chance and something drew me in. I don't know what, I don't know why, but it did. With this new film I was thinking it's not going to be as good as the original. I accepted that fact. I went into this film knowing not to expect the best thing ever and I think that helped my opinion because my thoughts on this film is it is a complete garbage follow-up to the 1974 film but it's still fun and I'd recommend it. I genuinely would. I want people to watch this film because I found it fucking fun. This will have spoilers because I'm going to find it very hard not to talk about this film without spoiling it. So I'd say go and watch it. It's on Netflix. It's very easy to access. Come back here and we're going to talk about it. The new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is a requel, which is a new word that basically means a reboot sequel. So it follows on from the original films and completely forgets about all the rest of them messy timeline that there is. We follow some young Gen Zers going into the town of Harlow to buy it and basically sell it off. I don't know, it's very strange. And obviously Leatherface lives there and um, they upset him and old man Leatherface starts killing again. Fun. So let's talk about the bad points. Let's Let's, let's pick out all the things that make it not a good Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. First and foremost, one of the biggest things that I noticed and um, kind of drew me out of it was there was no family element. In the original film and all of the films, to be honest, even the remakes, had an element of family. There's the Sawyers. They are important. Leatherface wasn't alone. Leatherface was more like an accessory who wasn't the main villain. He was just obviously very iconic and had this in incredibly macabre look. So of course everyone was going to pick up on him. He had the same sort of vibes, obviously, visually, as Michael's look, as Jason's look. You know, he had the masked look. But I think he's more interesting than those two. 
so obviously in this film the main bad guy is Leatherface. Leatherface's character, this is my next point, if you watch the original film Leatherface acts like a scared puppy, he's reactionary, he's never really the one that instigates things, he's forced by his family and by situation to act out and it's perfectly encapsulated in the scene where he kind of freaks out and he's sat by the window and he's like oh my god who all these people they keep they keep breaking into my home and he looks concerned but in this film he's cunning he's planning ahead he's um you know leaving his chainsaw in one place um making people think he's there when in actuality he jumps out from another way he's acting out of anger and revenge rather than being more of a reactionary character to people encroaching on his personal space and his home that is where this movie falls short in terms of Leatherface's character also he's old he's I, I can't remember if it expresses exactly how, how old he is even if he was a teenager in the original he would be in his late 60s no he wouldn't even if he was in his teenage years in the original which I highly don't he would be in his late 60s early 70s there's 50 years between these two films and you're trying to tell me that Leatherface is running around like a little man no no he's not why do I like this film so much I also found the setting quite off-putting it was filmed in Bulgaria from what I hear um which is where the uh, Leatherface prequel was filmed not to be confused with uh Leatherface the third film in the franchise that came out I had Ken Foray in it. What is going on with this franchise? But it wasn't familiar to the original. It didn't look sweaty and gross. In fact, it fucking rains. It rains. Even the 2003 remake, you know, I mean, I like that film. Even that film was sweaty and gross to watch in that respect. Everyone looked uncomfortable in the heat. I don't know if it's a set as it is filmed in Bulgaria, but it looks like a theme park you know you go to Universal Studios it looks like one of the sets that they have ready to go when they need filming and one of the other things that frustrated me no cannibalism I know it's kind of you know more so very heavily implied in the original but I don't know I feel like it can't be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film without the dinner scene or something of that respect and I feel like it was weaker for that again I know that the 2003 remake didn't have that, but it kind of replaced it with this massive chase scene that felt just as uncomfortable, at least for me. Jeffrey Dahmer would be sad, just saying. Get very sidetracked. We're already at 12 minutes of filming. Oh my God. And I think the biggest issue that most people had with this film was Sally. If you're in the horror community, you know this. Um, Gunnar Hansen, the original Bubba, and Marilyn Burns, who played Sally, have both tragically passed away. Rest in peace to both of them. They obviously had to get new actors in for this. They brought in an Irish actress. I can't remember her name. Let me look it up. Oh, I'm going to mispronounce this. Olwen F- F- Ferreri? Sorry if I've mispronounced that. I'll write it down so you can see it. it's like here. <laughs> they brought her in. She does look like an older version of Sally. I'm, I think the casting has done very well. I think she does incredibly well with the material that she has given. But fuck me, she couldn't, she, she, she didn't need to be in this film. Oh my god, she didn't need to be in this film. Sally was probably the biggest insult in this whole film. She felt like a Laurie Strode ripoff and she didn't do anything for the plot. You could have cut her out completely. The film would not have felt different. She wasn't even in it for that long. Probably like all of five minutes that they wanted to bring her back, you know, a legacy character and all that jazz. But it felt more like an insult to the memory of Marilyn Burns and I feel like they probably shouldn't have gone there, but they did. And now we have this. With all these negative points that I have made, you'd think I hate the film, but I don't. I really don't. I don't. In fact, I found myself enjoying this film a lot. It baffles me that more people didn't enjoy it. I'll go into why. I did see a lot of people comparing it to Halloween Kills. I think because they came out not too far after each other and they were both quite divisive. Yeah, I have a theory as to why I prefer this over Halloween Kills because I was not a huge fan of um, that film. 
my theory is is we had an incredibly smart sequel to the 1978 Halloween in the 2018 film also named Halloween characters made smart decisions Michael Myers was still absolutely terrifying and even though people were being smart and you know trying to get away from Myers and making reasonable decisions and you know Laurie having her whole house being fucking a fortress ready for Myers I think Halloween Kills came out and completely undid most of those smart decisions that were made in the 2018 film. So it had that very recent memory of the last one in being a smart film. We all know that Halloween Kills is a filler film anyway. We know that there is going to be Halloween ends. We know. So that is my theory as to why I do not like Halloween Kills, but I like this film, even though this one is an absolute awful follow-on from the original but my fellow texas chainsaw massacre fans you know this is not the worst movie in the franchise and i'm looking at these two moments And here's why I found it fun. Um, okay, it was a bit slow to begin with, but I found the characters annoying. But any slasher I do like, and I'm not heavily into slashers, I do find the characters annoying. So I was ready to see them die. <laughs> I found the kills incredibly memorable. I, uh, especially the first one. Like When that happened, I was like, oh, so... So this is where this film is going. Okay, fun, you know. Leatherface is incredibly resourceful now too. Yeah, that was fucking sick. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I watched that scene, I was like, whoa! <laughs> I found this film was shot relatively well, okay? Nowhere near as good as the OG one. You know, the OG one and the 2003 remake had Daniel Pearl. This one is fine. I think it shot well. There are some shots that remind me of the original film. So there's a scene where Sally walks into the cornfield and finds Bubba's surrogate mother skinned in a field of sunflowers. There's a bit where she's walking in front of her car with the headlights on. And it sort of jumped my head back to the original film where the hitchhiker and the cook are kind of fighting each other in front of their car in the middle of the night with the headlights on. And also the, the the skinned body propped up reminded me of the opening where there's the body on top of the grave. Again, that wasn't Leatherface's doing. It was more the hitchhikers, I believe. I might be remembering that wrong though. <laughs> it's a fun slasher film. Things happen in it. Like people die. It's memorable. <laughs> it had moments that made me go, oh my god, like I was cringing. But I didn't really like the characters. So I was kind of like, okay, this is fun. Leatherface felt like such a force to be reckoned with. He he was pissed in this movie. And he was ready to kill. And I was there for it. I've been wanting some Bubba in my life. I think Bubba needs to be handled better uh, in terms of films, uh, franchises. But what can you do? Also, this film doesn't overstay its welcome. It's a short movie. You can be done with this film in an hour and a half. Like, with credits, it's an hour and 20 minutes something stupid like that it's nothing and even then they could cut stuff out of it and it'd be fine leatherface looks incredibly menacing i enjoy his new look actually i i didn't like it when i saw the previews and the you know the pictures before the film coming out i was like mm, kind of looks a bit shit but in context with the movie i found and and the way he moves and kind of holds himself i f i found it menacing i found it intimidating and i liked that i thought that that's a really cool way to to play him you know i think i said this earlier like there, there's un unlikable characters so they are like slasher fodder you're waiting for them to die in gruesome fucked up ways i'll tell you who i, I wanted melody to die i i so wanted her to die so so badly <laughs> she fucked me off right from the beginning of the film but then she grew on me as you 
see her um interact with her sister lila who by the way i loved her in eighth grade she was well good (laughs) elsie fisher amazing but she grew on me so when the ending came about and i'm going to spoil the ending because i want to talk about i should have seen it coming and i didn't i knew something was gonna happen because it's a slasher film and you know the killer always comes back for one final scare well leatherface did that he took me by surprise and i'm okay with that he beheads that bitch and i actually felt a bit sad about it and then he just kind of holds it up and goes (laughs) and i loved that i was like that's so good and it's kind of so funny that her sister's kind of reaching out the back of a tesla type car crying kind of mirroring the end of the original where sally is in the back of the truck losing her mind it was great i liked that a lot and the shot was well cool like it didn't cut and you just see her lose her head that was a cool visual effect i i think that was done well that is another good th- thing about this film i don't think the cgi gore took me out of it too much there was enough mix of the two that i was like yeah i'm gonna get behind this this is kind of cool you can tell when there's cgi gore that y- definitely it's not easy to saw someone in half but they do it and it didn't take me out it i think they did it to a degree that felt believable some cgi usage in horror films the thing prequel i'm looking at you completely draw you out of it this wasn't too bad there was enough mix of real and fake that i i was enjoying it (laughs) i can't say much more like i i it really baffles me how much i did enjoy this because i was so expecting to be disappointed and to some degree i was but in another way i was having a lot of fun i was sat there with many of the decisions rolling my eyes like sally being basically chainsawed in half and then still being able to shoot leatherface to save lila and melody and what have you what what that bitch should be dead but she wasn't she was still alive she was in the trash Man, this film was so bad, but it was so fun. This film baffled me. It made me question, what do I really want in a film? Because I'm not usually about just mindless gore. And I I haven't even talked about the, the best bit. This is the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre film that has a chainsaw massacre. People died and it was violent and I loved it. That bus scene was fucking amazing. And I don't care what anyone says. I really liked the inclusion of the Instagram shots. I found it funny. Because my boyfriend's gonna laugh at me for this. I've been to Horror Nights. I've experienced what that's like. I've filmed it. I, I've seen people talk about it online like, oh, this haunted house looks shit. <laughs> I wanna go, woohoo, and all this stuff. So those comments actually kind of felt authentic. But also, why the fuck would you go to a man who's literally just chainsawed off someone's head, (laughs) covered in blood, wearing someone else's face, brandishing a fucking chainsaw? Why would you go, try anything in your cancel, bro? You're asking for death, my guy. There you have it. That is my defence of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. I'm not going to defend the things that are bad about it. There are things that are bad about it. But I enjoyed this film and i think more people should watch it and enjoy it because i want another one and i don't care what people think of me i think sometimes you need mind-numbing entertainment and this was it for me especially on that day i don't know if i'll watch it back and think actually this was dog shit i probably will but we'll see i don't know I ca- i'm kind of rambling i think i think people that have been talking about this film need to slow down sit there and think oh my god people have different opinions and that's okay you know i think it's okay if you didn't like this movie it's okay if you did like this movie it's okay if you loved it it's okay if you hated it what's not okay is bullying people for their opinions so please don't do that but what i do want to hear is what you guys thought of texas chainsaw massacre 20 22 did you like it did you hate it did you think clever face was shit did you think he was incredible did you think he was intimidating 
Did you miss the family aspect? Did you like that they got rid of it and the cannibalism? Do you like what they did with Sally? I think we all agree that that was shit, but I'd like to hear what you think. Yeah, I'd just like to know what you think of this movie. Maybe you can help me unpack why I like it so much, because I'm not entirely sure why I do. Yeah, let me know what you think about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Do you have a favourite film in this franchise? Let me know. Put it in the comments. I'd like to hear it. If you want to follow me on my socials, I'm Hand Grenade on everything. I stream on Twitch quite regularly. Um, I don't have a set schedule, but if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you can keep up to date with everything that's going on. I've been filming for half an hour. I have views on this film. Also, can we talk about the fact that... L no one seems to be talking about this. But there's a shot where Dante goes into that orphanage where Leatherface is and the woman. And Leatherface is in the bottom left hand of the frame. I think it's the left hand. Bottom left hand of the frame. And then it cuts to another bit and it cuts back and Leatherface is gone. Bitch, he's gone. Chills. 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 I like that shot. I like this film. I'm going to defend it. I think it deserves a bit more love. If people liked Halloween Kills, they can like this too. And it's okay that to like one and not the other. And it's okay to like both, hate both. It's okay to think whatever you think. All I want people to do is watch more horror. Support horror for more horror. Thanks for watching. Bye. That was a long one.